everyone, welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV, Upper Mississippi River Valley, and today we're finally getting into our silage harvesting. We've expanded the farm a bit more, and I have picked up three different trucks here. We've color-coded them to match their trailers, just so that I can uh, refer to them and think of them as the blue, black, and red trucks here. Probably should have done a white truck instead and done the uh, red, white, and blue. Maybe we'll have to add another one in here at some point. However, these are the uh, day cab Peterbilt trucks. I think I showed this off in a previous episode here. It's been another one of those uh, crazy weeks where I've been off for a little over a week from recording due to some technical issues. But uh, these are from Northwest Mods and Edits and the uh, silage boss trailers here are set up to have a extended uh, capacity here and that's going to let us kind of keep pushing on our harvesting and not be so reliant on having to get auto drive working with a lot of trucks and i'm thinking or i'm hoping i should say that uh, three trucks is going to be enough to keep us moving but realistically we're probably going to need a fourth truck because i think what's going to happen is i'm going to have each of these uh, forage harvesters out running around in the field and they're going to each need two trucks to keep them going in real life, I'd probably need three or four trucks per forest harvester, but I'm going to take this out here and we're going to start chopping on one of these fields here. And I'm thinking it's going to be a uh, field seven to start with. It's a, a nice large field and we'll be able to uh, knock this off pretty easy because there's not any crazy terrain or big ditches or anything for us to get hung up in. And that's going to let me see that our setup's all working well. Uh, just checking the growth. We do have this sunflower field over here that I forgot about at some point that we'd purchased that. We're going to get to go out and harvest that with the combines, but not until we get into October, it looks like. Uh, I think all of this corn we're going to try and run through the forage harvesters based on how much silage we ended up having to buy just to keep feeding these cows. It's going to make sense to stockpile as much of it as we can. And I did hear everyone in the comments of my last few videos. Uh, I think nobody wants to see me do the silage bags again this year. So we are going to be investing in either another harvest store, which I'm leaning towards because it's the simplest path, or we might put down a silage bunk. Uh, we're not going to do that this episode. I think we've got enough capacity to hold at least one of these fields in the harvest store that we've got right now. But we might look into uh, adding on to our facility and putting uh, some of that stuff over by the BGA there. We might reclaim some more of that ground. I just haven't done a lot of that so far because the ground is so uneven and I've had a hard time building on this map. Uh, it, it's just not worked out very well for us. So we're going to think that through a little bit more. And what I'm going to do, I think, before we get too far into things is I'm going to get all of our equipment brought out here and I'll get the course play courses uh, set up and then we'll kick things off and uh, I'll rejoin you in just a moment. All right, we are back and I've got the course all set up. We backed everything up here to kind of get it out of the way a bit. And we're going to start with our first waypoint. We're going to start with uh, the left side. I have set this guy up to run two courses or two headland passes with a two tool course. Should work out pretty well. And we'll see how he does. Looks like he's going to drive into the field to get started. That's all right. And what I need to do now is remember how to use auto drive. I think there's an unload combine mode. Field 7 is where we're at, and we're going to be dumping into the harvest store. I think if I get him kind of up here next to the chopper, we may have to do a little bit of this ourselves uh, just to get started, but I should be able to just start him off and let him go to town. I'm hoping with the extended pipe on these things that the trailers are going to be able to run like below, behind him, below him, uh, or on, even on the left side, apparently. Uh, this has always worked pretty well, but this is the first time I've used this particular semi. 
I believe, with this. And we have switched trailers. We had two different trailers we were using uh, to run our silage last time. And this time I wanted to give these nice silage uh, boss trailers a try. See if we have any better luck with them. Plus, everything was a little bit shorter. Uh, both the semi and the trailer, which will make maneuvering around in the yard a bit easier. Uh, I've got the course already copied over here onto the other forage harvester. So I'm going to go ahead and get him started. Um, let me make sure. This guy is set to field 7. Perfect. And then I'm going to be pulling this uh, semi up here alongside him. And we'll be doing the same thing where I need to set this to unload combine in field 7. And let's go ahead and bring that back to the harvest store. I'm going to try and get up here and maybe he'll switch over to me without me having to destroy a bunch of crops. Maybe not. I could always just start auto drive right now and let the worker do it because I know the worker can uh, get in here without wrecking anything. But where's the fun in that? I think if I can just put the trailer right back alongside the head there, it'll get smart enough to flip things around once the semi's here. Like that, maybe? All right, it looks like it's figured it out now that I've restarted it. We'll go ahead and kick this guy off. Maybe I'm too close even. All right, a little bit of finagling and we've got the chopper on the way. Looking good. We'll get rid of that and I'm going to stop getting so far ahead of it. And we'll let auto drive take over because I think it's going to do a lot better job than I'm doing right now of figuring out where we need to be looks great and then similarly what I should be able to do is set this guy up to do the same thing and as soon as there's a guy starting to run out and needs a backup driver we'll be able to get up there now I'm gonna uh, switch this guy around where I'll put him uh, coming into the field so that he's kind of pointing towards that field 7 waypoint I think and that way he's in the appropriate position out of the way a bit. Something like this. I don't remember where that waypoint is actually. Yep, it's right there. So if I just do this, he should pull himself right up here onto the edge of the field and wait his turn. And jumping over here, we can see I did remember to fill up the silage additive, thankfully, on uh, these uh, forage harvesters. We've got quite a bit going into this blue truck here. We hop over to it. It's already about half full. Uh, like I said, these are the large capacity trailers. Uh, I believe these are BC Bueller's uh, silage boss trailers, and they come with a realistic capacity, which would be the 85 cubic yards. But we've bumped it up to the very unrealistic 340 cubic yard capacity uh, just to keep up with things. And just as a comparison, eight bales is only 52 cubic yards. So there's going to be a lot of silage coming in with each of these trailers. And it should do a good job of keeping our equipment moving just that little bit longer. But even with this unreasonable uh, amount of capacity, we're still barely going to make it around the headlands, it looks like, before we're completely filled up. In fact, we might even not make it all the way around just looking at the size of this field uh, there's still quite a ways to go so it's something for us to consider uh, however this is going to make getting through this uh, forge uh, work a lot faster uh, and we're at a point of scale with this farm where we have to start bending the rules of realism a little bit just to be able to get things done in a reasonable amount of time and just to further illustrate that point, with two forge choppers, if they move consistently, which they won't do because we're going to uh, lose some time when we have to wait for trucks and ship things out, it's going to take 48 minutes just to get around this one field. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a concern at some point. Um, we are getting stopped here. I'm wondering what's going on. This guy is 
gotten hung up on the little bit of corn stalk that got missed, maybe? I'm not sure. He's backing up, though. I really do think it's this uh, corn stalk here that's causing him problems. If I disable the driver, that's actually going to call the other driver over here pretty soon, which is not what I wanted to do. However, I'd rather keep the forge harvester moving. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take over driving manually. Uh, by the time that red truck gets pulled around here and into position, I'm hoping to be a little bit fuller. And maybe we'll go ahead and send this guy on his way back up towards the farm and uh, keep things moving. Thankfully, that driver didn't uh, crash into us like I thought he was going to for a moment there. We are at least past 80%. I'd love to get a uh, big semi like this full before we drive it all the way back to the farm, but we've still got a chance, I suppose. That red semi is going to be over here in a moment. I feel like I'm probably going to get uh, rear-ended out of the way if I'm not taken off pretty soon. I'm going to give myself a gear, and this is going to be a perfect spot to make the transition. That guy is riding the bumper on that chopper a little bit close for comfort. I'm waiting to see if they can figure this out without me. Looking pretty good. Oh, look at that. A smooth transition. What do you know? And we got 91% here in the uh, semi that we're driving, which is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up to the farm. Uh, I suppose since we're pretty well full, I can go ahead and turn auto drive on here and we'll let it see if it can do its thing the first time out in any new season making sure that nothing changed with any of our courses uh, I didn't level the ground in a way that things get hung up stuff like that I don't know we changed so much stuff on the farm and anytime we've got new equipment it always pays to keep a close eye on the automation for just a little bit our moment of truth here as we come up to the farm Everything seems to be in order. No major complaints. I'm really excited to get some chaff in here as well so that we can uh, start cranking out the silage. We're out of feed in the uh, harvest store at the moment and we've got enough to move forward a day or two, but the farm, it's, everything's not topped off like it was before. So we've got to start keeping an eye on things. And as soon as we get everything moving again here, I will be able to uh, bump time up a little bit so we're making feed. Uh, now I'm seeing that we've got chaff, so I'm going to go ahead and activate our corn silage fermenting. And that is going to start cranking over the silage into here. And you can already see that ticking in, and that's going to let us keep making the TMR with what hay we've got. Uh, the, the hay is going to go a long way though towards feeding everything because it's uh, the one out of the four components. So now that I've got the chaff moving, I think we're in a good spot. Uh, I've got time on 3x right now. I think I'm going to go to 5x because we've got all four days of September here to get through chopping the three huge fields of corn that we've got. So I think if I want to pace myself and do a field each day, and that leaves me a day to handle any unexpected weather or things that we might have, I think that's going to be the best way to handle this. Now, I've noticed that I haven't seen the other semi coming up to the farm here yet, so time to start tabbing around. Here we are checking out what's going on. It looks like Auto Drive has something that it's trying to figure out. It's going to take this stuff off to dump, it looks like, even though he's not quite full yet. I'm not sure I agree with that, but I do have a new semi on the way out, so I guess I'm going to let him go. This one's still going to town, no problems whatsoever. And here I'm going to look, the pre-call level is 80 or 60%, uh, I'm sorry, so uh, unloader... When the current unloader reaches the pre-call fill level, I think what I'll do is I'll turn the pre-call on for 80%. I think that's going to be a good time to call the next loader. And that's what this guy is set up as, is 80% call unloader. So I wonder if what happened, because he was at 87 and we were transitioning to a new uh, set of rows, if they just decided to switch out then and there. I'm not sure. Either way, 
He's already filling the next semi, which is working great. The red semi is like half full and getting emptied, so it should work out perfectly to have this one semi in the middle going back and forth between them. If he can get unloaded and get back out there, he'll take over for the red semi, and then the red semi will go back out and take over for the blue, and they'll just always be uh, round robining between the two combines, and, and the floater will switch back and forth between them. So I think we've got everybody spaced out perfectly right now. Uh, if we can just keep things moving like this and nobody gets hung up on anything uh, or lost in the field like uh, drivers tend to do. I'm feeling really positive about that aspect of things. Let's just open up the production chains here. We're almost half full on chaff already and we've only uh, been working on the headlands so far. So that is the major concern. We need to uh, get that stuff cranked over into TMR. We might have to run the time up a little bit and uh, keep things moving uh, from that perspective here yet. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe we'll, now that I've got a good backlog of chaff, I'm gonna go up to 10X and we'll see how that works. I don't wanna go too fast. I wanna make sure we get the forage harvesting done today. Uh, in this field, I want to tackle one field a day right now is my goal, but we're going to bump the clock up a little bit here at least while we see if we can stay ahead of bringing more chaff in by truck. Our red truck seems to be doing great, only 68%. We'll see if he gets hung up as we transition rows this time. I'm hoping not. And over here, a blue truck is doing great, figured things out. I was a little bit worried. I thought that the blue truck was going to be getting confused here as it was uh, transitioning around that corner because of how it was stopped, but apparently not. Apparently we've got no problems at all. Looks like we're gonna be working our rows from the back side of the field down towards uh, the side that we started on, which will actually work pretty well for us, I think. Um, I did not do skip rows with this particular course setup, and normally I do, especially with forage harvesting. Um, that way I've got one awkward pass down the middle of the field, or a few awkward passes, depending on the size of the field. But then I've got more room for the trucks to go back and forth. What I'm worried about with this is that uh, we're going to get some trucks stuck in the middle of the field here because they don't want to drive through the grass or the uh, crops. So it's going to be real interesting to see how this red truck handles the transition to driving immediately behind the forage harvester on the way down, especially because I think it's starting to get full. And if that truck gets full as we're working our way down the field, what's it going to do? I don't actually know. Uh, the other truck is empty, though, and already down at the end of the field there, waiting for somebody to call him to get picked up. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. This is a pretty short row, so I don't think he's going to get full on this particular row. Uh, but I think he's going to get full here soon, probably of the next pass. Thankfully, there's huge grass areas on the outsides of the fields here that uh, the trucks can drive into right now. Waiting for this red truck to figure things out. Uh, one thing that I've loved about these Peterbilt 389s so far is that they haven't gotten stuck on anything uh, driving around. I know one of the other semis we'd used in previous episodes was having a real hard time with some of the hills. It was spinning out a lot, and this one seems to be working pretty well. Now, it looks like he's not quite getting close enough, but Auto Drive is attempting to figure that out. I'm going to let it do its thing. It's looking like it knows what to do. It's just going to do it very, very slowly. Eh, you know what? Actually, I know I've got a semi down there waiting for me. Let's just do this. We're going to manually drive it, and the other semi will catch up. We're here. We're trying to get some work done today. Oh man, he's a speed demon. We gotta go faster to keep up. I'm hugging off to the side a little bit here just because I feel like if I were to back up and be right behind him, I wouldn't quite have enough throw to get the silage into the truck with how things are set up right now. 
this seems to be working pretty good. We're just narrow enough to get over here. So I'm probably rubbing the tires a little bit with that step hanging out there. It's very much shooting the silage all the way to the back of my trailer. I feel like if we were doing this for real, we'd have loaded the back already and we'd be loading it into the front if I had to drive this close. And we'll just a circle right around here. I can see the other truck on the mini-map coming in hot, ready to uh, take over from me. Oh, is he going to cut in front of us? That's a dangerous move there, Semi. Please don't. And the uh, course play detection did not... Uh, handle that very well but luckily everything seems to have worked out for us I'll keep going here while he turns around and gets into position again it's always something here when you're using the hired help to try and get things done most of the time it's more efficient though most of the time all right well there he is I might as well take off and let him do his thing and since I'm here, I'm kind of curious if there's if I left enough of a grass pathway to drive around this side of the farm, I feel like it'd be faster than going all the way back down there and taking the road. We're going to do that. We're going to try it out, see if I can sneak around the outside of the field. Worst case, we drive on our uh, grass field a little bit. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Yeah, we've got we've got some room. We'll make it work. I should be able to re-enable the auto drive course as soon as I get up on the uh, road here again. But for the time being, I'm a little bit concerned about how bumpy it is here. We're starting to lose power trying to get up the hill. Drop down a few gears. And a 92%, not quite full, but... I'm liking the entire uh, let's be more efficient and if we're in a good spot to switch out we'll go ahead and do so. I see the two forge harvesters are starting to get uh, close to each other over there in the field. Makes me just a little bit nervous. Uh, we are staying ahead of the chaff now though which is great and we've got some TMR starting to stack up. So I think what we'll do is hop out of the semi up here. And I'm going to get the mixer wagons moving again on feeding our animals. We've got them all set up to do so. I just need to fire them off. Uh, barn B for this guy. That's still accurate. And then the tractor behind is set up to be barn A, which would normally be good. Uh, in fact, it is good. Um, we are just going to need to get somebody set up to do the smaller barn over here at some point. And I do not have a truck for that. I was using the silage trailer actually to move the feed for uh, this smaller barn. And why is this guy not emptying? Uh, did he pull too far forward? Let's see here. I did pull too far forward. Look at that. Well, we'll go ahead and just drop it out manually real quick here. I wonder if I can shift that back ever so slightly. Oh, I don't know where he's going right now, but hopefully he can figure that out. And I just want to make sure that when I tried to shift this back, we didn't mess up the rest of the course. It doesn't look like we did. And we're just going to jump back out here into the field and help out another uh, semi-driver. He was getting a little hung up trying to turn into these end rows. I think this is another case where we probably should have done the skip rows is just to give our semis more room to get turned around uh, rather than having to turn right back into another row fairly tight. If we were skipping a number of rows going to another chunk of the field, I think it had been a little bit easier for them to find a way to pull into the row without having to turn quite so tight, but it is what it is. Not a huge deal. And we're making pretty good progress. I'm excited to say I think we've got just the right amount of equipment running in the field here for the current setup at least. We're getting the field done and the machines have kept moving pretty well. 
the whole time. We've got the other chopper is, is hung up right now, uh, but I blame myself for that as we got the truck kind of uh, stuck waiting for uh, the dump to happen there. If we'd done a little bit better job of things, I don't think that would have been as big of a deal. And I can see the truck's already out here and heading towards one of the uh, choppers. Since I'm driving this truck, there's a half chance that he's coming to help us rather than the other forage harvester. But I'm hoping he'll go the other way. If he comes over here, I suppose when I get to the end row, I can always switch and start driving for the other chopper again. Yeah, it looks like he is coming after us. That's unfortunate, but understandable, I suppose. Let's see if he turns in here. I thought I had these guys set up to not drive through the crops, too, so I'm a little disappointed uh, that that's happening. Let's see if we can check the settings, I suppose, one more time. Um, if we come in here and we say restrict Pathfinder to field, avoid fruit is on. Um... I don't feel like I need to stay to the field. We've got some pretty big shoulders and stuff here, but I'm really disappointed that we are driving through the middle of the field when we have the avoid fruits uh, setting turned on. It is what it is, though, I suppose. Well, the red truck seems to have successfully taken over for the guy we were driving for. I might as well spin back around and keep our other forage harvester moving. I think this is one of the jobs I actually enjoy in Farm Sim is being the uh, cart guy or the uh, silage uh, box in this case, but I like getting to drive the grain carts, I like getting to be the unloader and keep things moving. It always has that sense of urgency trying to keep everything moving efficiently, try to keep the combines from shutting down, and we're going to see if we can handle that today. I'm trying to find the appropriate gear so that I've got enough power to handle these heels, but I'm not in the way. What is uh, rotating down there on my tire right now? Got some uh, very odd visual issue there on my tires right now. I don't know what happened. I wonder if that's just a uh, this semi thing, or if my other semi is doing the same thing. I'm trying to pull ahead here and get out of the way. Do a quick spin around. I can see the other semi is on its way out to take over for me, even though we're only at 35% ourselves right now. We're going to keep going here for a little bit and uh, drive this truck until it's a little bit fuller. I don't want to unload it when I'm, you know, not even worth driving back to the farm right now. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of keep driving. We'll keep unloading. I'm going to keep an eye on both of these forage harvesters here, see if we can keep them both moving efficiently. Like right now, where the red uh, semi has decided it needs to back up for a while to pull into the row, I think I could just swing around here and keep the forage harvester moving. And then once he's into a new row, the red truck's going to come in here and figure it out. Or we've just made everything worse. I am not sure what's happening right now. Well, I do appreciate that despite that being a uh, bit of a traffic jam, that the workers figured it out after all. And it looks like I have lost my priority. That's all right. We'll let the red... Uh, semi take over for a bit here i'm seeing the other forage harvesters got everything going on too maybe it is time for us to just uh skedaddle back up to the farm i suppose
after running the trucks for a little bit, we're actually manually running a truck again. Uh, auto drive's working okay. It just gets hung up on the uh, turning around, especially when we're doing the cut-throughs like this from time to time. And it's just a little bit easier to hop in and take over yourself from time to time. And I just like doing it. We are full up now in the harvest store, though, with our uh, silage, or at least with the chaff. I guess we've got plenty of capacity for silage and feed, for that matter. But we're just not processing it fast enough. Uh, so that is going to be a continuing problem here for us. Now, as I move through the night, we should process quite a bit. So the hope is that even though we're full up on chaff right now, that we're going to continue to process some. We're starting to get closer to dark. I really want to get this field done before it starts to get dark. And my hope is that we've got enough capacity in these three big trucks, uh, plus how much more we'll process while we're working out here, that I can have the trucks loaded up and dump them overnight and keep the uh, silo processing chaff all night long and we'll really get ahead and we'll have empty trucks and hopefully a good chunk of the uh, chaff all processed out by the time we get wrapped around into the morning uh, because we've got a uh, bigger field to jump into in tomorrow's chopping expedition. And that means that next episode we're definitely going to have to figure out where we're going to put our uh, silage bunk and or another harvester unit like the one that we're using right now uh, I'm not even sure that that was set up as a placeable that I can place down I know it's built into the map uh, but we'll go check that in just a second let me get turned around here we'll set up a uh, bit of cruise control uh, shift 3 should uh, follow that along quite nicely we'll get driving straight here and if I come into the shop and go into construction and go into production, do I see that harvest store in the list here? Because I think it's a, a production item. Uh, it's not a selling point. Buildings, silos. It's not listed under silos either. Tools? No, it, it, I mean, it was definitely a production facility and it's not listed in here so that pretty much answers that question we're not going to be able to use the blue harvester that we've got set up there now unless i'm missing it uh and it's in a different category let me know in the comments if it's uh if you know if it's in the store and we can place that and i'm just missing it uh, but it might just be a building that's built into the map and we're not going to be able to place a version of our own which is unfortunate so I'll probably be looking at doing uh, another harvester of some kind, though, is the easiest method for me. Uh, I am going to save off on doing the silage bunk because I do want to uh, remind myself how to set up a course play driver to handle doing the compacting and a bunch of that kind of stuff as well when we do that. And I just haven't played with that in a little while. I think we're going to save that for another episode. I've got my eye on doing a large cattle series uh, at some point here. Not dairy, but uh, straight up cattle. And I think it could be fun for us to uh, try out some of those things on that series potentially. I'm going to swing around and we're going to pick up this other harvester because he's been sitting here for quite a while, this other chopper and keep it moving forward. I don't know where my semis are. I know we were full, but I thought we had one more semi that should have been making its way back out to the field here. We're gonna have to track that guy down here momentarily. Uh, we're almost full ourselves though, so I might as well just uh, keep unloading the chopper, see if I can fill this semi all the way up and I'll take it back up to the farm and we'll figure out where our other truckers have ended up. Um, I'd love to just start this guy off driving right now, but I'm worried if I do that, he's gonna skip ahead to the other chopper rather than this one. 
and we're at 92% already. We'll get to the end row and then send him back up to the farm, I think. We are getting some amazing yields out in this field, though. We're not going to even make it to the end row. We just hit 100%, and we're all full up halfway down the row back to the farm. So we're going to set this guy off to start and unload combine landing path i was trying to get him to skip i guess i'm doing it wrong he's got to get to the entrance and then he'll go dumb so this semi is good to go and this is why we don't have another semi out here it looks like they got a little too close to each other and could not continue down the road oh, that's very unfortunate it's thrown off all of our timing here uh, we might have to look into uh, spacing these road passages out just a little bit wider in some spots. Hopefully the red semi makes it back to the entrance though before the uh, black semi gets there and we don't have any more collisions. It's not like the blue semi's got enough space to dump all of his chaff right now anyway. Uh, so that's going to be a bit of a hold up here for us. Uh, I expect he'll be able to get about a third of it dumped in there. And we'll probably be sitting at more than half of the trailer still full of chaff by the time he's done with that. We're running out of daylight fast though, which is my other big concern. Uh, so I am probably going to go ahead and send the blue semi right back out to the field as soon as we get what we can dumped into the harvest store here. I'm just looking at this space to the side of the biogas facility. We just do not have a lot of room to set up a, another harvest store on flat ground. Maybe over in that space there, but we need a lot of that room to back in and get stuff out of the BGA. Moment of truth to see if we can get to 50%. Looking promising. We're in the 50s. Yeah, 53. Close enough. We'll go ahead and send this guy forward to field 3 or field 3, field 7 again. Uh, he can get a bit more going while we uh, get closer and closer to nighttime here. The black semi is moving back up to the farm. I'm really going to have to look into uh, what's going on with the wheels on this mod. I swear it wasn't doing this before. Uh, so it's like two different wheel uh, options are being shown here at times. I'm going to have to figure that one out uh, before it drives me nuts. It uh, is all right, though. It's not affecting the ability for the mod to actually do what it needs to do, which is great. Oh, it might just be that the hubcap is rotating around an awkward point here. It's not. Yeah, we'll just have to fix that. That's not a big deal. I'll appoint it out to uh, Mr. Du Bois and see if he can get that uh, patched up as well. I'm not sure if it's because I'm using an old version of this that he was so kind to put my logos on the doors for me, or uh, if this is just a uh, an issue with the uh, truck in, in general that needs to be patched up, but not a big deal. And we're on to the, man, last couple of rounds over here with the lead chopper. Uh, I feel like by the time we turn and come back, there'll be one more round after this that he's going to have to do, which is perfect. We should actually get all of that into the red semi, so that'll feel good to know that we've got the chopping done with at least one of the forage harvesters here. And since we've got the blue uh, semi on its way back out here, uh, the blue semi won't have enough to allow the other chopper to get done, but maybe he'll have enough to get him caught up to this point. And whatever capacity we have left in the red semi here will hold the rest of this field. Uh, like I said before, I'm just hoping that we can get all of the corn off of the field here today. It is going to start getting dark on us, though, uh, which means, man, I hate to do it, but I think I'm going to slow time down to 5x while we finish up this field just because at this light level I can still see what I'm doing but once it gets pitch black it gets really hard to work out in the fields here and, and farm sim especially so we'll keep moving oh we're getting caught on him all right we'll fix it so as I hoped I'm I'm almost positive this is our final pass here and it's such a small pass on the angle we on the left side. I, I really think this is going to be the end of the course for this forage harvester, which is going to work out perfectly. We're not even 
30% full yet with the red semi here. So I think by the time uh, I can get over there, we'll be able to take over uh, for the other semi. I think that blue semi is probably going to be getting close to full again soon if it's uh, managed to keep up with the chopper. I know it uh, struggles to turn around on that far side of the field uh, a lot of times uh, just because of the way the angles work out. I was expecting, there we go, that chopper to finish up and fold up. That's how you know it's done. Plus the AI worker is done message. That's always a big giveaway. And the semi, I don't know where the blue semi is going, but I guess I'm here. I might as well take over and do my thing. He's not full because I don't see piles and piles of chaff in the back of that blue semi. I think because he's trying to avoid driving on the fruit for a change. He's going all the way around to catch up with our chopper, which is less than efficient. And I will say the silage boss trailers have a pretty good set of lights on them. Uh, I've enjoyed being able to see a little bit better than I thought I was going to. Uh, as we're out here finishing things up in the dark. I generally despise playing uh, games in the dark, uh, not just farm sim, but games in general. So it's always a positive when the equipment has some good lighting and lets you keep going. We're now getting pretty close to the end of the day. We're already uh, um, at 1,900 hours, and we're going to be... Probably not making as much progress on the chaff situation as I hoped. And the main reason I say that is uh, the chaff has continued to process the entire time we're out here harvesting. And that other semi has not yet come back uh, to start dumping or to start unloading something. And I was uh, kind of hoping that it would. Oh. We're getting into all kinds of traffic jams as this guy tries to figure out what he's doing. Unfortunately, the course play driver is very impatient. We're just going to take over and get everybody back up out of here. Let's see if I can let that chopper move forward some more. There we go. It's always something with the uh, course play and everything else causing issues for you sometimes. I think rather than start auto drive back off at this point though, it's going to be more efficient for me to just jump in here and handle it myself. Uh, I do think we're going to get the rest of this field into these two trucks though, because if I remember right, when we were just into the blue semi there, it was only at 63% or something like that. And we're at 44% here right now, so uh, we should be able to make this work. I'm very curious how much is left in that black semi with as much time as passed. Uh, I know the harvester is continuing to process uh, the uh, entire time we're out here doing other stuff. I just don't know how fast that is. Uh, uh, I guess the question in my mind is how much chaff do we process an hour? And I can't remember exactly how much chaff these trailers hold. So if I knew the answers to those two questions, I could estimate how quickly uh, until the other semi would come back. But at the end of the day, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I just don't want to get surprised by another semi showing back up, up in this field. Though I can see on the mini app just barely uh, that the auto drive driver for the semi is still sitting over there at the harvest store, which is good news. It means he's not on his way back out here. Why is this guy going so far out of his way to drive into me? So it looks like we are going to fill up this red truck before we wrap up this field. We're right on the... Uh, edge there of 100% and there it is so I'm gonna pull the truck off into the middle here and then we'll send it back up to the uh, farm by doing that and I'm gonna switch over here I think we've got that blue truck just sitting here we even left the engine running so it's all warmed up and ready to go we should be able to jump across and finish filling this thing up Let's get some field lights on, see what we're doing. 
And yeah, it's got 65% in it, and we've got a round and a half left to finish up on these short rows. This is going to be a piece of cake. Looking forward to it. Um, I'm sure that other semi is going to not get into tons of trouble on the way back up to the farm when it's told to go dump into the harvest store, but there's another semi still sitting there. It's going to be fine. I trust him to uh, pump the brakes and wait patiently. Looking at our finances, we are still sitting at $200,000, uh, which is pretty good considering we've bought a couple of additional fields. We bought uh, several additional semis and trailers, another forage harvester with the head. Uh, so we're doing really good financially in this series. Uh, honestly, we're probably making way too much money uh, with how we've got that going on right now. But I'm curious to see what things are going to look like once we get all three barns up and running, fully productional, uh, making milk every day. Our dairy has been being sustained by one of three barns for all of this time. And the other uh, two are right there, uh, very close to maturing. We'll do so within the next year uh, pretty easily. And so we've got our eye on it. I can't wait to see how it all plays out here. Uh, it's been a long series. This is episode 70, I want to say. Um, we'll see where things land up when they get edited. But uh, yeah, 70 episodes into a series is pretty good for me. I tend to uh, lose focus and move on to something else uh, every time I have to take a break for some reason uh, from making videos. So this has been my longest running FS22 series for sure. And we still got a little bit more to go because I really want to see us hit that uh, mass maximum of productivity on this farm here. Uh, I know a lot of people have suggested that I could expand our farm operations to some of the other farms on the map and move our younger cows out there and continue to feed those uh, to uh, maturity or even just sell them after a certain point. But right now, we are at our maximum capacity just keeping up with the feed on this farm. I mean, sure, because we're making so much money, I could buy the rest of the fields on the map and we could just keep going. Uh, but I'm one man. I don't know if I could keep up with all of that. That might be a fun set of live streams. And so one of the things that I'm thinking about doing once I get to a point where I'm happy with this uh, playthrough is we might transition it over to a multiplayer server and do some live streaming on here. Uh, we've got enough equipment on my farm at this point that I think we could uh, handle running a live stream server. Like right now, we could have somebody out here doing some tillage, spreading some nitrogen uh, with the manure spreader, all kinds of different jobs we could get going right now if we had a uh, multiplayer server running and more people here to help out. But I am, uh, I'm keeping myself busy enough just keeping these forage harvesters moving. So we don't have a lot of throughput to do that. And the hired workers aren't smart enough to not run over the crops that are still in this field. Where I'd feel fine with a player starting to spread slurry out in the parts of this field that we've already finished, uh, if that makes sense. So I think that's my intention because there's... Not a lot of customization that we've done to this map. It is running the older version of UMRV, but it's been running pretty stable for me. I think it'd work out good as a multiplayer server. So uh, if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, as always, we do have a number of multiplayer servers that we're running for the uh, channel members. Uh, those have continued to run even while my videos have stopped. I've managed to keep the servers up and running. Uh, I know a lot of people are having fun on the Spring Creek server that we're running right now uh, with a lot of the channel members. And that's a huge map. And some of the farms on there, I was logged on to that uh, just last night, uh, troubleshooting some mod conflicts possibly. And the farms are just massive. Uh, the members have really done a good job over there. So we might have to jump back onto that server at some point here too and check things out. However, for today, we have finished up all of the chopping we were trying to do in this first field. The first of three. Uh, I don't think this is our biggest field, though, by far. I, in fact, I want to say this is the 
smallest field we've got, or maybe it's the medium sized field. Uh, I guess field seven's bigger than field 23. So this was our medium sized field for chopping. Uh, I think next episode we'll probably be jumping into our smaller field, field 23, and hoping that our automation will stay busy on that on its own while we go and figure out where we're gonna put the rest of this silage. We need to uh, slap down something uh, to store the silage for us, whether that's a silage bunk, which I'm leaning away from, but maybe I'll change my mind when I go to figure out mods and stuff, or if we figure out how to get a, another harvestor uh, put down somewhere on the map. As we come up to the farm here, I just want to take stock of how much chaff we've still got uh, not in the harvest store that needs to be processed and we also need to apparently uh, deal with a little bit of a traffic jam here so I'm gonna shut this guy down here we're going to turn this guy off he's actually at a hundred percent we were at 90 something percent and then the semi that's been sitting here for a while only 50 percent emptied um, that's actually pretty uh, interesting. I thought more of it would have been emptied by now, but nope, that's all we've processed. And that means we've still got just a little bit of a traffic jam here. Let me see if I can uh, resolve this. One thing we need to do is feed the cows in this small barn. We don't have any automation set up for that just yet, so I'm gonna take this as long as I've got a drive manually here. We can bring this load right through and bring that in here and start dumping it. Let me see what the menu actually looks like. Barn B is doing pretty good. Barn A, as expected, full up because it's using the least amount of food per day. We're looking like about a month away from starting to... Uh, uh, work towards reproduction which means it'll start eating more food but uh, it's gonna take a while as we can see here this is the barn we're filling with feed right now we're at 80 percent reproduction i think that means it's probably got two more months uh, before we give birth and start producing milk again here and it uh, looks like our slurry situation is starting to back up uh, gonna need to move the manure around our digestate is filling up once again i'm going to change the output mode to selling on this uh, next tick it's going to get rid of all that digestate i'm almost positive i've got a full tanker and uh, of that sitting there already so that's going to be our best move and as you can see our silage is starting to stack up faster than we're able to make tmr uh, but we're making tmr fast enough to keep up with all of our barns so this is what we're going to hopefully see uh, move forward here overnight. I would like to at least get all of our trucks empty overnight, but right now I'm kind of wondering if that's even gonna be possible. Um, I'm blocked in here by the slurry tanker. That's all right. We'll come back and deal with all of this traffic jammery off camera here, I suspect. We've got this John Deere tractor falling to the same issue here. My goodness, well, we'll at least get this guy out of the way and bring him over to dump some feed into uh, wherever he was going. He was going to barn A. Uh, maybe we'll send him over into barn B and just keep barn B topped off since that's the, the money maker. We don't need it to run out of uh, anything here as we keep going and rather than sleep through the night just because I want to make sure our production facilities are staying efficient I'm going to uh, switch this back down to storing mode now that we've emptied it out and made a little bit of money doing so and I'm just going to keep an eye here on our chaff silage TMR situation and really hope that the chaff continues to empty out here and as we get into say the eight o'clock hour of uh, tomorrow i'm hoping to see that we've processed enough to empty all of these trucks and i'm also just curious to see the money come in see the costs come in uh, i always love the end of the day cycles here um, I did miss the costs there. It was just a few hundred dollars, though. Nothing major. 
and it looks like we've at least gotten through enough to empty this semi out. Uh, so this semi is going to get moved over here into the yard out of the way. And then we're just going to run on over here and grab the next one, pull it forward and start to dump that out. I'm just trying to get to the 6 o'clock hour. There's our $212,000. I'm going to slow the time down here quite a bit uh, because we have managed to process a lot of our materials here in that amount of time not enough i don't think quite to get all of our semis emptied out but the silage is starting to back up and the tmr is starting to back up and the main reason why i don't want to move too fast is just i've got a lot of slurry work to do moving slurry around and a bit of feed work to do to keep the feed topped off uh, and really the keeping the feed topped off is just to make sure that we don't get backed up here to the point where we're not processing all of our materials i think right now the most important part is to get rid of as much of this chaff as we possibly can uh, which we've done now uh, we've got the second semi gone, and I think that third semi might actually fit in here now. Uh, we might as well see here before we wrap up the episode, as long as we're here. We'll just park this right on there. Should be out of the way. And we'll pull our third semi around. I guess he's technically not completely full, so there's an even higher probability he'll fit all of the chaff into the harvest store here. While that's unloading, I might as well zip around the farm here and get this semi out of the way uh, so that I can start unloading more feed into this barn, get that uh, case tractor moving through things. And this is full, so it's just the never-ending uh, cycle taking care of all these animals of moving uh, these trucks around, getting them over to the BGA to process all of that slurry getting the feed moving through all the barns and trying to keep up with our farm operations at the same time. I'm relatively certain that that blue semi is done dumping already and he has put all of his material into the harvest store here, but we're about to find out. Oh, no, he's still got 30% left in there. Well, that's all right. We'll leave him here to uh, keep working on that as he can. We've uh, succeeded in everything we wanted to do today, though. We got our first field chopped. We've got uh, everything else on the farm moving pretty smoothly here now, and I'm feeling really good about it. So let's uh, go ahead and wrap up things here. I've been ending this episode for 20 minutes now, it feels like. And next time, we'll be jumping over to our next field for some more silage harvest. And we'll be figuring out how we're going to continue to process more of this chaff into silage in the next episode. And that's all for today. Kirk out.